So, here we have it. I have a door that has just been painted. So this went through the process of my finishing. So this is basically three, uh, two coats of primer and two top coats to get it to this point. And that's my preferred method when I'm doing any kind of painted surface like this. Uh, if I find I, I, if I try to skip coats, especially on anything that's profiled like this, it, it just looks starved. It has to have at least two top coats on it. If I'm doing dark colors, let's say blues or blacks or, or anything like that, it even gets one extra. It gets three top coats as opposed to two. The back, I usually just do a primer and one top coat. And, uh, and that's fine because it, it's not a contact surface and it's only just for color. But when you do this, especially on uh, MDF doors, because you usually get kind of uh, a rough mill edge on here and you can sand it but it'll always be kind of pitted and rough but by doing this you each coat subsequently fills and gets into all those little crevices and by the time you've got your fourth coat done everything is fine two primer and two top coat so this is your primer coat right here it's got two on the face and one on the back and this is a raw door right here raw mdf hasn't been sanded yet but at least gives you an idea what it, the stage is from here to here to here but when i want to show you one specific thing if there's one takeaway that you can get from this whole video is this right here this here will change the way that you spray and it's an inline filter and it goes on the end of the gun here and it's got basically wire mesh on the inside, very fine. But it'll not allow little chunks of anything to come up into your paint, onto your paint surface. Because the minute you get uh, like something that's not in suspension and lands on your door, it creates a pit. It's bad enough that you get the environmental stuff with dust and whatever and debris in your in your spray booth. But eliminating it at the gun will take out probably 90% of your finish problems. Like if you're getting lumps on your finish finishes, put one of these things on. I can't tell you enough at how this has changed my finishing. Anyways, uh, watch the rest of the video for the process of what I do. And uh, like I've said in many of the videos before, I'm hoping that all these procedures can help you in your business or in your projects you do at home. All right, I'm going to show you the most thankless part of the whole job of woodworking, finishing and scuff sanding. I hate this job, but it's the probably the most important job that you got to get right. Okay, so here's a door. It's got uh, primer sprayed on it. I had my supplier, they've got a robotic uh, flat line finishing, so I asked them to to spray this but the reality is I got to get all of this clean and you can see right here it's, it's it looks kind of abrasive almost uh, just because of all the the kind of dust and debris and uh, leftover from the milling and sanding it just it just collects so that all has to come off and there's no easy way to do this properly so what I do is I just scrape the inside with a chisel and all this does is just break free all those little little hang-ups, those little pieces of, of debris. And I got 120 grit sandpaper. And all I'm trying to do is get down into this line here. Like right into that corner. And just knock over as much of those edges as I can. I'm not going hard at it, but I do want to create a distinct line, like a crisp line right in there. There we are. Okay, so I've got 320 grit sandpaper here. And I always break my sheets into four because I find it easiest to... Uh, to work with a piece that's about this size. I just fold it over and then I get into that 
that line right at the inside of that 45. This is the part of the job, it is the most thankless thing you can do is finishing. The only time somebody says anything is if it's bad. <laughs> Otherwise, this is what you just have to do. All right, so let's get the inside. Okay, so you can see I have to go look. I've got uh, an LED light shining on this in, the, in here just to, to help me to see if there's anything because you have to get everything and I, I feel it as I go. So here I can still feel a hang up point everywhere. And it's one of these things you can't use gloves for doing this because you have to be able to feel what you're doing. Okay, like here. If you have a glove on, you'll never, never be able to feel that, and it's really difficult to see. Okay. Same thing, feel the edge. Because when the, uh, the flat line finishing, when the robot sprays this, the paint sometimes curls up underneath your profile here. So I've just got a little round over, but the paint sometimes just rolls over and you have to be able to take that off. There. See, I've actually cut through into my board underneath here, but I don't have a choice because I have to get that profile nice and clean. Yep, there it is. So I have a, a flat three by four square pad for doing all this, like the insides and, uh, and, pro, and flat. <laughs> what it takes to get a door prepped and ready for paint. All right, so I've got two coats of primer on a face side. I've got one coat of primer on the back side. And the advantage of when you're doing a door that's uh, two-sided, it means the edges get hit multiple times. So basically it's got, this edge has been hit three times as it, uh, as it goes through the process. I like to do the repeat on the other side, on the, on the face coating. And what I like to do is put two face coats on here and one on the back. But what I do is I do a face coat, a back coat, and a face coat to finish out. And uh, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm gonna show you how I do one coat on this. And this is using a HVLP system, HVLP here, and uh, I prefer to use this because I use multiple colors all the time, and I bought the best unit I could buy, and it goes really fast. So watch this. I'm not going to put the fan on right now, just because it's too loud.
There we go. So come take a look at that. Right there is what you want. That's called a full wet coat. And you can see there's no hangups anywhere on here. All right, so I gotta mix up my paint right now. So I poured into this, this container right here what was left in my one gallon can. And it worked out to 964 uh, milliliters of paint. So I prefer to mix all my paint by weight and not by, uh, not by volume. So the paint that I use is a polyurethane paint and it's three parts. So you have paint, you've got the hardener, and you've got reducer. So it's one part paint, half hardener, and 30% reducer. So it's basically one part, 50%, and 30% on, um, on the reducer. Because each one of these has a different specific gravity. So the paint will have one weight uh, by volume. So if I was to actually look at it and, and you know, look at it and see uh, down on the graduation here, uh, would this translate out to 960 milliliters uh, by, by volume? And I look down here and it's not. So the paint is actually heavier by weight and so is the catalyst and the reducer and so on like that. So if I've got 964 milliliters of paint, I need 482 milliliters of the hardener. So I just add this to it. I just look at my scale here and I'm looking for 482, 60, 70, there we go. So I'm just one or two mils over that. So that's not really a big deal. You always want to try to get your ratios like within one or two milliliters of it, especially if you're, it's one thing if you're mixing um, like two two gallons of paint at a time. If you are off by uh, five or six milliliters, not a big deal. But if you're mixing, let's say, a hundred milliliters of paint, you have to nail this 100%. So my 30% catalyst is 290, or sorry, my reducer. So 290, you can see this has a much heavier weight, the, re the reducer does, than the catalyst. Right. 290, not 190. <laughs> okay, 140, 70, 87. There we go. So now my paint is ready just to be uh, to mixed up. And what I like to do is um, I call it uh, uh, the one minute mix. So basically, I'm going to stir for one minute. And you can count backwards, you can count sheep, however you want to count, it doesn't matter. But I just keep trying to mix it, try to get this uh, all into suspension properly. There we go. So this is the ratio that I found works to be the best. Uh, I could go a little bit thicker, but uh, what happens is when you're spraying it out of a, an HVLP gun, uh, if it's too thick, it'll go to orange peel. So I prefer to have it just a little bit thinner so it comes out and then it just spreads like glass on there. And since I'm always putting a double coat on anyways, certainly on the face side, it's not an issue. And the reality is like when I'm painting and if you watch how I do it, you'll see I go one direction and then go a second pass over top of it. So instead of just going in one direction, I like to, to do a cross hatch pattern in a sense. It's the same way as when I'm doing any kind of uh, sanding or anything like that. Exactly the same principle. Okay, so I think I'm pretty good uh, for my mix here. And I can just load my gun. There we have it. So the pot life on here. Basically, I want to be able to spray this within probably 40 minutes and no more because after that it starts to, 
almost gel up and in two hours this is basically uh, like pokey hard so uh, I'm not saying it's hard like a rock but it goes almost like jello so that's kind of my open time for this and I know how fast I actually got to spray everything all right so coat on the back There we have it. a full wet coat. All right, so I'm ready for my final top coat. So backs are done. And now I just gotta do the face. So uh, there's about an hour and a half in between each coat. So this is now an hour and a half after doing the back. So I can do the face, but I don't have to uh, sand everything because everything on here feels really good now there was just a slight ten just a little tendency to get a bit of a, an overspray on yours not much but just enough that all you need to do is just go over it with uh, just a simple rag and that's it just to pick up any of the fuzz that's left over but the advantage of doing this when it's technically not dry it's uh, it's called a wet on wet coat so meaning I can still get a chemical bond so when I spray, this will actually grab onto the coat that is below it. So I don't need to do uh, a sand on there, which is a mechanical bond. I only do that with my primer, and then I put the paint on, and all I do is just a slight adjustment. If there's a small little pit or anything that's on here, I just give it a quick go over, and it's done. So let me finish this off, and I'll show you. full wet coat on there you see the reflection back that's what you want and you notice that when I was using the gun I was going a little bit like this because the reason I do that is I pull up on the side so that the paint doesn't roll over the edge so if you go all the way across like this you get full bore going down and what happens is it will roll the edge slightly and you might get a chance for a hanger on it. So that's why I end up doing it this way. And it eliminates any of the paint from just hanging on the, uh, on the edges. 